Um, so, uh, is, hang on, what does that say? <laughs> oh, right. Um, so, I kind of feel like uh, what we've done here is, is, is really ironic in that cruise ships are kind of what human societies used to be. And we're just trying to get back to that. Like, just a, a, a fairly, like, a manageably small number of people in a, a pedestrian-only environment. Uh, like, and, and, like, a number of people that you sort of kind of, kind of recognize people fairly regularly, and, and you become a, a group of people that has some kind of unity and cohesion. And, uh, and, we don't, and to get back to that, all we needed to do was create, like, the most like, monstrous, technological, like, eight gajillion tons of steel thing to float in the ocean so that we couldn't, like, all, just, like, frenetically connect and run around and be like, I need to go to a different restaurant today. Like, I refuse to believe that I can only, like, I need to live in a place where I can go to a different restaurant every day for the rest of my life and never have to go back to the same place because, oh, uh, I'm from a small town, but not this small. This is a smaller town than mine. Um, and and I, I love that about where I live. They, you know, you go to the grocery store and you recognize people. And then I, I talk to people and I'm like, I want you to move to Missoula because I want you to work for me. And they're like, no, I don't want to do that. And I'm like, why? And they're like, I need a city. And I'm like, you don't. You don't. That's not what we're built for. We're built, apparently, for giant ships. <laughs> um, though, however, yesterday as I was staring out over the edge of the ocean watching it fly by at a million miles per hour and the churning gaping maw of nothingness, and I was like, it'd be so easy. <laughs> it's this, this, this little rim between me and nothingness forever. And then I'm looking at the back of the boat, and it's just sort of going, well, and I was talking to Peter Siegel, no big, and, and he was like, it's like my life, it's just passing by, and it's nothing. <laughs> I've left nothing behind me. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think that that's true, Peter. <laughs> so maybe as much as, uh, as much as there are wonderful things about it, there's also some troubling things. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, and if you jump into the nothingness you've created, you get eaten by sharks. <laughs> or maybe you just asphyxiate, who knows? <laughs> if you're lucky. Um, but uh, I, I do think it's strange that we tonight have to be formal for dinner. Um, I look around and I see a lot of the same outfits. <laughs> this guy's already formalized. Well done, sir. Um, but most of us are in, in the t-shirts. This song is about um, the uniform that I wear that's not very uniformy. It's called T-Shirt and Jeans. It's on my new album, which isn't coming out for a while, so don't like it too much. <laughs> also, I kind of tore my voice up during karaoke last night. Not because I was singing, but just because I was singing to the people who were singing. Just, I also know the words to this. I was singing too, and then when the guy did the hardcore version of that Taylor Swift song, I was like, we are never, ever, ever. And then, I don't know why I did that, but it was super fun at the time, and now I'm like, I have no high register anymore. So I'm bringing this song down a few, a few, uh, whatever they're called, and I don't know, I don't know music theory, that was not, that was not what I was raised with. And, uh, so, if I s just start singing in the wrong key, I apologize. We're gonna try. <sighs> this, this is just weird to sing in a completely different key than I've ever seen. Okay. I want my wife to come up here and do it. This is what she's gonna do. She just sings it in my ear and I do it. Um, yeah, okay. I remember when I was a young man, I, Mama took me to the store and I was stared out of my mind as I stared at that dressing room door. I was like, what if the pants are too bright, too dark, too baggy, too light, too big, wrong cup, or too tight? And Mama's like, just be yourself, son. Whatever you choose will be right. Well, it's like she knew my very soul, cause the pants I bought that day would change my life. I left that store with a uniform that I was wearing when I met my wife and at my first boob rock show. And when I took my first boob, and the first time I read Thoreau Okay, I have to stop <laughs> So I was looking up the lyrics to this song on the internet the other day um, And so that line is when I touched my first boob And the first time I read Thoreau I was wearing a t-shirt and jeans, that's the idea um, and, and the lyrics on the internet said When I took my first poop <laughs> And the first time I read Thoreau 
Um, the first time, just to be clear, the first time I, the, when I took my first poop, I was not wearing jeans. Um, just a uh, spoiler, I guess. And uh, I, was, I was probably not wearing any pants. Actually, I wasn't wearing any pants at all. Did you know that babies poop in the womb? Yeah, super weird. So like they haven't like before you even ever eat anything, you're pooping because like your blood it gets filtered out by your liver and it becomes in like the inside of your like your intestinal lining is always sloughing off and stuff like that. So uh, mm. uh, so babies in the womb are, are poop and people sometimes say to me, hey, why your brother has two adorable children? They're so cute. Why don't you have kids? You and the cat has such cute kids. And I'm like, okay, well, lots of reasons, but first I just don't want any stranger crapping inside of my wife. <laughs> Even if they're related to me. I don't want them. Okay, so how, where was I? <laughs> oh, I got it, I got it. I, know. I was a rhetorical question. <laughs> and the first time I read Thoreau, I did it all in my t-shirt and jeans, that's right, it doesn't mean anything. People who know me know that I try not to say too much just with my clothes. And if you want to get to know me, man, we're going to have to talk so that you can find out who I am. Well, jeans are pretty great, they're durable and functional. They're pants made out of plants, so it's hard to argue they're unethical. And I sure can say a little or a lot. I'm a fan of unironic images of things I like, like giraffes or my YouTube friends or bands or chickens, Jesus nerds or bikes. But if you really want to know what I love most about this wardrobe is that it tells you very little about what lies beneath these clothes just by looking. <coughs> At me, you would never know if I'm a thousand air or a billionaire. I wanna tell you with my mouth, not with the clothes I wear. I think it's odd how when we rebel, we put on uniforms like eyeliner or fancy pants that come factory pre-torn. It's easy to say that a guy must be a certain way just because he dresses offbeat. Subcultural shortcut, a cultural shortcut might be what he's going for, but it's always gonna be incomplete. Yeah, we're never gonna know what that means, which is why I wear t shirt and jeans. That's right, it doesn't mean anything. People who know me know that I try not to say too much just with my clothes. And if you want to get to know me, man, we're gonna have to talk so that you can find out who I am. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk so that you can find out who I am. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk so that you can find out who I 